And joining us now via satellite is Mr. Matthew Schistler. He is the CEO of Cord Blood America Incorporated. Matt, good to see you again. Hey, Don. Good to talk to you. Well, now, Matt, of course, your company is involved in the storage of umbilical cord blood. We're going to be talking about stem cells, but give us a general overview of what your company is involved in, please. Don, we privately bank umbilical cord blood stem cells for families. What that means is that families pay us to store the umbilical cord blood stem cells that are a perfect match for that child. Now, those stem cells are hematopoietic, and they're used to repopulate the immune system if, God forbid, that child would ever come down with a disease such as cancers or leukemias. And uh, family, families are choosing to store these stem cells to, as a biological insurance just in case that happens. Well, Matt, what are some of the uh, diseases and conditions that could be treated using cord blood stem cells, say, 10 years down the road? Um, 10 years down the line, uh, you know, let me talk about 10 years by backtracking just for a second. Currently, it's used to battle you know, things like leukemias, anemias, you know, blood disorders, immune disorders, and so forth. 10 years down the line, umbilical cord blood stem cells are showing a, a great affinity for also having regenerative traits, which means they could regenerate tissue. See, right now, they're repopulating the immune system. They're creating new and healthy blood cells. But they're showing the traits to regenerate tissue. When you start talking about tissue regeneration, now you're starting to talk about things such as spinal cord injury, wound healing, uh, stroke, things like that, that tissue can be regenerated off umbilical cord blood stem cells. There's a lot in testing right now. Um, another disease that, that, that seems very, very promising is um, insulin creation and, and curing juvenile diabetes using umbilical cord blood stem cells. Well, Matt, of course, we're talking about collecting the umbilical cord blood. It's cryogenically frozen uh, and stored for possible use later. Do we know how long the uh, samples can last? Yeah, it's about 20 years now, Don. Um, it, the oldest umbilical cord blood stem cell, cell sample that we know of was uh, processed and stored in 1989. Now, just a couple of years ago, this sample was tested for cell viability, and it had over a 90% 90, 90 viability rate, which means it's still a good sample. So I'm going to tell you that stem cells from the umbilical cord being cryogenically frozen will last at least 20 years. Scientists and um, some doctors will tell you a lifetime or decades. We know 20 years so far. You know, Matt, when my wife Tracy gave birth to our daughter about eight years ago, this option was not made available to us. We had never actually heard of it. How long has this become a uh, viable industry? Well, it, the earliest pioneers in the industry started their companies in the early 90s, believe it or not. But it was really around 2002, 2003, where the hockey stick of the curve of people starting to store stem cells started to happen. Um, and pre-2003, it was less than 2%. And today, it's about 5% of families are privately banking umbilical cord blood stem cells. So there's been a real uh, education process in the last five or six years. Well, of course, Matt, when the subject of stem cells comes up, the controversy arises. Uh, of course, that is embryonic stem cells. We're not talking about that at all here, are we? No, no. We, we privately bank umbilical cord blood stem cells. They're considered adult stem cells. It's after the child is born. So no, we, we do not... Our company is not in the business of processing or storing or manipulating embryos at all. Well, Matt, for people who are hearing about this procedure for the first time, especially expectant parents, uh, what are the costs involved in uh, getting this done? The, um, the, the cost to parents at, at the time of sale, at the time of birth, is $2,075. And what the parents get for that is the collection, the processing, the testing, and the storage of the umbilical cord blood stem cells, obviously the collection kit. They get the medical courier, which arrives at the hospital and picks up the stem cell sample within just a few hours of birth, and it's usually processed or stored within 24 hours in our lab. And so they get, it's an all-in-one price package for the parents. And then after that, the parents have a $125 a year obligation for st as a storage uh, fee, and it's an 18-year contract. So once past the initial processing and storage, the parents are looking at a $125 a year bill. Well, Matt, uh, the Obama administration has approved federal funding of embryonic stem cell research, and even though your company's not involved in the embryonic side of it, all of this, all of this attention towards stem cells uh, must be good for the overall industry. It is good for the industry to hold on. I'll, I'll, look, I'll talk about it on two different levels. On the healthcare front, the more tools that um, our domestic research companies have to 
to test and put into trials stem cell therapies, the faster that the United States companies will be able to get therapies to market, thereby allowing people that suffer from illnesses that aren't currently treated and curable with stem cells to have access, hopefully within just a few years. And the prior administration didn't say they were against embryonic stem cell um, uh, testing, but they just didn't put any money behind it. So it was only it only allowed for private financing, which was kind of attacking the problem with an eyedropper, is like what I like to say. Now the government's breaking out the fire hose with this, and it's going to allow our companies to get stem cell therapies into um, into clinical trials faster, and hopefully commercialized even faster. On a financial front, um, the by the administration's move, it, it's now giving the United States as many tools as other countries have to do stem cell testing, processing, um, and getting into trials. And just to use it as an analogy, it's like building a house without a hammer. You know, if other countries are building their house and they have every tool and we don't have one tool, we're going to be slower to getting the job done than other countries. And what that means financially to the United States is if another country patents a stem cell technology or therapy that gets to market, we're going we're to end up spending billions and trillions of dollars to overseas organizations for this technology. You know, Matt, when you mention the United States and other countries, it makes me wonder, how large is the uh, cord blood storage industry here in the United States? Um, I think we're well over half a million samples stored as an industry. Now, there's no one governing body that puts the statistics together, unfortunately. I think we're probably even approaching close to a million samples are privately banked and about a quarter million samples have been publicly donated. So it's still a very small percentage of the annual births. There's four million births a year. And that, that in total is a very, very small percentage of, of those stem cells. Well, Matt, you know, we can't think of any medical procedure without thinking of how we're going to pay for it. Do you envision a time in the future when insurance companies are going to jump on board and agree to pay for uh, collection and storage? You know, we're hopeful, we're optimistic um, that that's going to happen, and here's why. It's really, it becomes an exercise in arithmetic. If insurance companies start seeing more stem cell diseases being treatable, I'm sorry, diseases being treatable and cured with stem cells, they're gonna, their actuaries are going to say, okay, it makes more sense to pay to store stem cells, even if it's just for high-risk families, than it is to treat the problem using stem cells, you know, post the umbilical cord blood collection process. So. As we stand today, I'm not certain that, that the financials make sense for insurance companies, but if we start curing and treating uh, something like juvenile diabetes, which affects a large percentage of, of the population, you're going to start insurance companies really taking a hard look at paying to store stem cells for families with that, that high risk. For Matt, uh, for people and expected parents who want to do a little more research on what you do, uh, what's your website? Um, our website is www.corsell, that's C O R. C E L L dot com. That again, C O R C E L L dot com. Again, Matthew Schisler of Cord Blood America Incorporated. Again, their website is Corcel dot com, C O R C E L L dot com. Matt, uh, amazing uh, journey into the future. Thanks for joining us here on Health This Week. Don, thanks for having me on.